Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we're gonna to be doing another tutorial on this Eufy wall light with a 2K security camera with no monthly fees. In today's video we're gonna be doing a tutorial on just the app. So like I just said, in this video, we're gonna be doing a tutorial on just the app itself, minus the lighting section. That's gonna have a whole video dedicated for itself. Um, I'll link that down below, or you can go find it in the full length video I've already posted. But this video is going to be reviewing just the app, and then at the end, I'll give you a final review of this product. Let's dive in. Right here, you can see my side door camera. If we hit the three little dots in the corner, then you have the option of turning the lights on and off manually, snoozing notifications, so if you're having people walk past normally, if you're overworking in that area and you're like, look, I don't need 100 notifications of me pulling weeds in my garden, you can snooze that for you know 30 minutes up to 12 hours. And then here is the gear, it goes into your settings. From your settings, we can see a ton of stuff, but let's go ahead and start in motion detection. I kind of left this as is. The standard settings tend to be pretty good with Eufy, but you can adjust these as needed if you have an area that needs to be more sensitive or less sensitive, things like that. So we do have the switch for motion detection on, and then we can click right here for activity zone. And you can see here, I've actually created an activity zone that marks, hey, let me know if you see any movement in this area. This is from my front sidewalk straight back. And then it also cuts off at my neighbor's fence because I don't need to know when my neighbor's out in their yard playing with the kids because you can see they have like a swing set there. That's gonna set off the security camera all the time if they're out there playing on the swing set. So I did section that off. I do wish that I could put my car somewhere else in the driveway. <laughs> Unfortunately, that is the most ideal location in my driveway for my uh, little white car there. The only thing I wish that it had here with Activity Zone is to create an exclusion zone. So my doorbell has an ignored zone and an activity zone. I wish that all of the Eufy video products offered this. Like, it's just a software thing. I don't know why one product would offer it while others don't. I might actually play, actually, now that I'm saying it, um, I actually think I'll, in the future, I'll probably play with the settings to turn off this activity zone and just say, hey, use your proximity sensor if it has one. I know that on the um, other one it says, um, so you can see here, higher sensitivity, further detection. So if I turn this down pretty low, it'll actually start to notice things closer, but it won't notice the neighbors in their yard. And I also have it set to record all motion, so it should be recording like when my car pulls in, but I can also turn off push notifications for, hey, don't notify me if it is not a human. And the human detection has actually been great. Uh, I haven't had a single instance of where I've walked in or out and it didn't catch me. Let's go ahead and look at my uh, motion, my video history here. So if we click on the little picture here, we can see I got home, side door. So this didn't notify me, but it did record my car pulling into the driveway. Let's jump back into the settings here. Let's go into our video settings. We have the option to turn off the Eufy watermark in the corner of the video when it's recording, as well as our status LED. So if somebody's outside, typically there is a little blue LED light that lights up to let people know, hey, you are being recorded. And if you don't want that, if it clashes with your color scheme of your lights and it kinda makes your fancy architectural lights facing your home look bad, you can turn off the status LED. Um, night vision here, we can turn off auto night vision so it forces it to just try and adjust the exposure in color but not using night vision. The, uh, the IR light from the Eufy camera is actually really good. You're getting a lot of definition. Record settings, so uh, you can tell it to end clips early if motion stops. Otherwise, it'll just continue recording, I believe. So I turned that on, so like if you walk out of frame, it stops recording. It's not gonna continue recording for another two and a half minutes. Privacy zones. This will actually black out areas. So a privacy zone is like, hey, you know what? I sometimes get motion detection out of a neighbor's window, so we can actually come up here and say, you know what? We don't want to see in the neighbor's windows. So we're gonna go ahead and block those out so I don't have to worry about like, looking in their window and seeing something we shouldn't. 
And then we can show our live stream quality. Mine is set to auto, so if it has a low quality stream, if we're having trouble connecting to the router, it'll downgrade the video quality until it gets a, a steady video stream. Or we can override it and say, hey, you know what? I only want high quality video streaming to my phone, even if it's glitchy frame cutting, so you only get one frame every two and a half seconds or minute or whatever. And then our recording quality, I set it to 2K, or I left it at 2K. Uh, you can downgrade that to 1080p if you want to be able to store more on the internal hard drive. So this one only has a four gigabyte built-in storage, but it's also able to link to the uh, home base that Eufy offers so that you can have additional storage. And I believe even the home base is expandable using, I think it's a USB port, plug in like an external hard drive. Uh, if you want to see a video on that, let me know and I will make a video of that on that in the future. So we went through video settings, let's back out, go to our audio settings, the next one down. It does record audio, speaker volume's at medium, alert volume is at medium, and it's actually plenty loud. Again, you'll see that later in the video. Notifications. So we can allow and turn off push notifications from this specific device. So if this is in somewhere that's not a priority, you can actually turn off notifications from this device so you don't get motion detection notifications, but it still records clips. If you then look back and you're like, oh hey, where did my lawnmower go? And you can go back and look at your history. But if you want to be able to keep an eye on that, leave your push notifications on. Uh, notification object, it takes you back to our motion detection page. The next thing we have here is our notification type. We have text only or with thumbnail. I found that text only, you're like, okay, cool, there's been motion. So now I have to click on it to see if it's like worth looking at or if I need to swipe it away. And a lot of times to click on it, load it up, get it to connect, to give you a thumbnail or even play the video, it takes longer than it would if it just you just waited the extra few seconds for it to send it with a thumbnail. A lot of times I'm getting the notification like if I'm walking up to my house. So from the front of my car, by the time I reach the door, I'm getting that notification. So it does take a few seconds, but it's fast enough. Whereas like a text notification, it probably would get to me like by the back of my bumper. So it's half the time, but now I have to go in and dig through my phone, whereas this, it gives me a thumbnail. So if I swipe down uh, on my phone menu in the notifications, it'll actually show a little thumbnail and I can see, oh hey, uh, I see the motion is it accidentally caught somebody walking on the sidewalk again. I can just dismiss that notification. And then I can also change the alert tone. For the alert tones, we have our default, which is like whatever your phone uses. And then we have silent, a bell, change, ding, Notify, security, success, and type, I prefer change. It's a, a drop sound, and I only use that for Eufy um, cameras. So anytime I hear that on my phone, I know, hey, I got a notification on my phone for my security cameras, and it's not like a text message like I'd get for a default. So I keep mine at change. And then motion detection. It, you can also change that to whatever you want, but I also I have my motion detection, no notifications, but it does record them. That's a really nice feature I think would be cool to offer on the other ones, which is so funny that like they offer some things on this, but not on others, some things on others, but not on this. Like it's software, just offer it all, right? And then if we go back to our main settings menu here, below notifications is general. And here we can say the name of it, we can talk about storage, where we're doing local storage or uh, store it on our home base, things like that. Um, Wi-Fi connection, uh, it's where you can change, if you get a new router, you can connect it to the new Wi-Fi or if you're in the process of switching them, you'll have both Wi-Fi's on hopefully and you can just through there connect it to the new Wi-Fi. Time settings, you can go in here to adjust your date and time if it's not automatically pulling that correctly. Mounting guide, it'll, like, I think we talked about this earlier, if you needed to go through that mounting guide again, you can. And then about the device, we'll give you things like your serial number, model number, system version, IP addresses of it on the network, as well as its MAC address. Also within about devices where you will check for firmware updates. Let's go ahead and check for one right now. current version firmware is up to date great 
All right, so the next thing I was gonna show you is the website interface. To do that, you'll go to mysecurity.ufilife.com and then it'll take you to your page. If you don't have an account, you'll create an account, but I'm pretty sure you just use the same account on your app. So whatever email you used on the app and then that login password to sign in on the web page. So you can see that I have cameras here, but they're all blurred out. So if I click on one, like my doorbell, it asks for a safety pin and all of them are gonna ask for this safety pin. To get this safety pin, you'll actually go over to your phone here. So from the app, you'll click on the hamburger bar on the top left and then go to control center. And then here we have web portal access. And here you can turn it on for one hour, 24 hours, however long you want it to be accessed, but it can't be just left on. And then you'll, you, you'll generate a safety pin and now you'll put in that safety pin here and it'll unlock all four cameras for, I set it for one hour. But you can't do anything other than look at the cameras. You can't edit things, you can't make changes. And I think it would be really helpful because I did kind of glaze over earlier the uh, setting up of activity zones because the user interface on that is terrible seems extreme but it definitely leaves a lot to be desired a lot of times i'll try to like grab the whole box and move it around or i'll try to grab a corner and i'm grabbing the box or it like it will move everything around it isn't intuitive and i wish i could just use my computer with a mouse to be more accurate while setting activity zones and things like that, but the web interface doesn't allow that. And that's something I wish that Eufy would offer. So Eufy, if you're watching my video, I'd love for you to offer some of those features. So overall, it's a pretty decent security camera in light itself. A couple of the things that uh, I have recommendations for, wants, or that I really like about it are, number one, the uh, great night vision. I showed you a preview there, and here's another one here on the screen. It does, really well at night, which is surprisingly good. Um, like this camera right here that I'm recording this on doesn't record even that good. Also, it's using a direct power connection from like wiring, so it doesn't matter as much, but when setting it up, you do have to use like a micro USB cable. Um, while it came with one, it'd be nice if they just use USB-C. I don't know why they don't just standardize that across all their stuff. Like some of their stuff uses USB-C while other stuff uses micro USB. I'd like to see it brought to like a current standard where everything is just USB-C. Next is the expandable memory. I wish that there was expandable memory. Granted, you can connect it to your home base and then uh, expand your memory from there by like, using the home base memory, but also the home base has an option, I believe, to expand its memory using an external drive of some sort. If you want to see that video, let me know and I'll uh, work on making a video like that for you guys. But internal memory, it only has four gigabytes, which I think is less than even my doorbell camera. So it seems to hold about two and a half weeks of video captures. Um, if you use more or less, it could be two weeks, it could be three weeks, things like that, depending on how often activity goes in front of the camera. But it's right next to our busiest door at my home. So it's going off fairly often. So two and a half weeks is probably good for most people, but I wish that it was possible to just like throw in a micro SD card into the camera itself, uh, the unit itself. There's just like a slot for like a micro, uh, micro SD card. That would be awesome. Now it does have the activity zones, but I wish that it had like the ignore zone or the exclusion zone like my doorbell has. That would be a really cool feature for it to offer as well. I don't know why they don't just do that across all models. Like why don't they just like unify all user interfaces? Are they not able to do that? Is there like a software thing that I don't know about? I'd love to learn more about that, but from what I know, what I've heard, what I've learned, that's for some reason they don't have the same stuff on each one and I don't know why they wouldn't. Going more towards the positive things, the setup itself, the only instructions I had was kind of scrolling through it telling me how to wire it is probably the only thing I may go back to. But everything else is so user friendly, easy to do, that you don't need an extra instruction manual, booklet, anything like that. Like literally you can plug it in and set it up. It walks you through the whole thing that you need like step by step stuff. But like. When it comes to plugging it in and wiring it up, 
it all was very user-friendly, easy to understand, and like figure out what they wanted you to do. Another thing I really like about this one is the notifications on it are quick, like really fast. I think I timed it in the, the first video and it's only six seconds. So from, uh, you showed, I saw a video of like when I was grabbing something out of my back seat and then I stood up and then it took six seconds from when I set off the camera to when I was, um, I basically was walking towards the back door. I already got a notification before I made it to the door. Like that's really fast. So if like you have somebody at your front door, you'll get notified before they are even there ringing the doorbell. And as of today, when I'm recording this, it is still $149, so 150 bucks. Great price for this uh, wall light and security camera with a 2K camera with fantastic night vision. And I, I don't think I can harp on this enough. This security camera, these security systems, anything from Eufy has no monthly fees. You can sign up for additional services to where like they watch it and they will call the police for you. But if you just want security cameras that will notify you and you don't need to involve the police, you don't need to involve anyone else. You can even share these cameras with other people in your household or friends. You're like, hey, I'm out of town. Here's access to my cameras. You can do that. But if you want to involve like a government association or a company, um, you can pay more, but you don't have to, which is the best part is you don't have to pay a monthly fee for these cameras. Once you own the cameras, you own the cameras and you can still use it. If you don't pay a monthly fee, you still get to use your cameras. Unlike ring doorbells, they're like, oh, you can't look at the camera if you don't pay our monthly fee. It's like, don't be monopolizing your own equipment. If you, I own it. I want to use it. And uh, if you want to get this camera for yourself, as always, links will be down in the description below. I am an Amazon affiliate, so using those links do help to support this channel with no additional cost to you. Even if you click that link and then go shopping on Amazon from there, buying anything else, that does help to support this channel. Again, no additional cost to you. Another way you can support this channel is by hitting that subscribe button. If you think you've, I've earned it, please consider subscribing. It's free, and uh, if you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up. But that is it. If you have questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the comments below, and I will be sure to get back to you on those. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.